simply allow your experience to be as it is, without any attempt to change it in any way. Notice that whatever we are experiencing, we are present in the midst of our experience. If I am lonely, I am present there. If I am tired, I am present. If I am hungry, I am present. If I am depressed, I am present there in the midst of the depression. If I am in love, I am present there in the midst of the feeling. Whatever I am experiencing, I am present there in the midst of the experience. all our lives we have been saying statements about ourself such as I am 10 years old or I am 30 years old or I am 50 years old I am married or I am single I am a mother or a father I am a friend, I am tired, I am lonely, I am in love, I am dreaming, I am attending a retreat, I am reading such and such a book, etc., etc. In all these statements we refer to ourself, our basic self or our basic being that we refer to when we say, I am. And in all these statements, our basic self or being is qualified (coughs) by various feelings, activities, relationships, states, etc. All the feelings, the activities, the relationships, the states continuously change. But our essential being, that to which we refer when we say, I am, remains consistently present throughout these changing feelings, states, activities and relationships. In other words, throughout our life, our essential being becomes mixed with and as a result apparently qualified by various activities, states, feelings, relationships, etc.
And in almost all cases, we give our attention exclusively to the feelings, the activities, the states, the relationships, which color or qualify our self. But we neglect or overlook or forget our self. So, for instance, when we say, I am tired, we, we give our attention to the feeling of tiredness and the being that I essentially am goes, as it were, into the background. We overlook it. If I am depressed or in love, <coughs> we give our attention to the feeling, but not to the self, not to our basic to our essential being that is qualified temporarily by a feeling of depression or being in love. So the first thing we do here is give our attention to our self. Which means we give our attention to that which we say to that to which we refer when we say simply I am before what I am has been qualified or conditioned by experience no need to reject any experience that we are having. So whatever experience you are having now, whatever your primary experience is, I am listening to a guided meditation, I am tired, I am lonely, I am sad, whatever you're feeling, don't touch the feeling. But emphasize the I am aspect of your experience. Instead of emphasizing the objective content of your experience and allowing yourself, your essential being, to fade into the background, let the objective content of your experience fade into the background and emphasize your being, yourself. Not your thoughts, not your feelings, not what I am saying, not your bodily sensations. Just become aware of what you say, refer to when you say simply, I am. Before what I am is qualified by experience. Don't try to find or know what I am as an objective experience. What I am is too close to myself, too close to itself, <coughs> to be able to be known 
or found as an objective experience, just as the eyes are too close to themselves to be able to see themselves. The eyes can only see something that is at a distance from them. Likewise, our self can only know something that is at an apparent distance from itself. We cannot separate ourself from ourself in order to know ourself as an object of experience. At the same time, our own being is not something unknown to us. In fact, our own being is more intimately known to us or by us than anything else. Our own being is closer to us than our most intimate thoughts and feelings. So we don't have to go anywhere. or do anything in order to be aware of ourself. If I were to ask you now, relatively speaking, stand up and take a step towards yourself, where would you go or what would you do? It's the same thing here. Where do you have to go? Or what do you have to do to know yourself, to be aware of your own being? If I were to ask you, be aware of the sound of the wind, you direct your attention towards the sound. If I were to ask you, be aware of the sensation at the soles of your feet. You direct your attention towards the sensation. If I were to ask you, be aware of these flowers. You direct your attention towards the flowers. But if I were to suggest, be aware of yourself. Where do you go? What do you do with your attention? Remember, the word attention from the two Latin words a and tendere, a meaning to or towards and tendere meaning to stretch. We can stretch ourselves, we can stretch our attention towards an object of experience. But there is no distance from ourself to ourself. No 
no distance to be traveled, no pathway from ourself to ourself, and therefore no room for the stretching or directing of attention. Simply be with yourself. Most people are, most people live in their thoughts, feelings, activities, and relationships. And in doing so, overlook or ignore <laughs> themselves. Live in yourself, be established in yourself. Remember yourself. Be aware of yourself, that is, be aware of your being. Or, more accurately, simply be aware of being. When I say, be aware of being, I subtly imply that being is one thing, and we can be aware of it. I subtly imply a difference between being and we who are aware of it. I do not mean to imply this. When we say, I am aware that I am, or I know that I am, we do not refer to two different eyes. The I that knows that I am is not different from the I that I am. The I that I am is the same I that knows that I am. In other words, our own being knows itself. That is, our being is self-aware or self-knowing.
our own being is not known by something other than itself. In other words, our own being is aware being. And the only reason that we can each say with absolute certainty that I am is because I know that I am. This knowing of our own being is the most intimate, the most obvious, the most familiar, the most well-known experience there is. But most people are so fascinated by the content of experience that they overlook their own being. They ignore their own being. Our own being is not something unfamiliar to us. It is simply buried, as it were, underneath or behind layers of experience. Later I will contradict that statement, but for those, for one who is lost in the drama of experience, our own being seems to be hidden, as it were, behind experience, behind layers of thinking, feeling, acting, relating. Our own being is not unfamiliar to us. It is more familiar to us. It is more familiar to itself than any other experience, but it is in most cases so thoroughly mixed with experience as to seem to be buried or obscured by it. What is traditionally called enlightenment or awakening is not the acquisition of some marvelous new experience. It is simply the recognition of our being as it is. It is the revelation of the nature of our essential being. The word revelation coming from the Latin revelare, meaning to lay bare. What is called awakening or enlightenment is just the laying bare of our essential being, not a being that we might become if we meditate for long enough or practice hard enough, but the being that we always and already are but in most cases obscured or colored by experience. So 
So what is called, what is referred to traditionally as enlightenment or awakening is not an extraordinary or an exotic experience. It is not an experience at all. It is simply the recognition of the nature of our being that lies at the heart of all experience, irrespective of its content. Its recognition of itself. Ask yourself the question, what is the nature of myself before myself is qualified or conditioned by experience? the name that each of us gives to ourself is I. What is it that we refer to when we say I? We have always been I. We say, I had a dream last night. I slept well last night. So I must be, must remain present through all three states of waking, dreaming and deep sleep. <coughs> What is it that remains present in your experience through the three states of waking, dreaming and deep sleep? We have been calling ourselves I all our lives. So I must be that element of experience that remains continuously present throughout all changing experience. What is that? 
what element of your experience is always with you. No thought, feeling, sensation, perception, activity, relationship is, is always with us. All of these are appearing and disappearing. But I remain consistently present throughout all changing experience. What is this I that I essentially am? Allow the objects of experience, that is, your thoughts, images, feelings, sensations, perceptions, etc., to fade into the background of your experience. And allow your being, which was previously in the background of experience, to come into the foreground. Simply rest in being as being. Don't leave yourself, don't go away from yourself. Come back to yourself. Instead of living in thoughts, feelings, activities and relationships, live in yourself, with yourself, as yourself.
come back to yourself. The Sufi mystic Lala said, I traveled so far in search of God. But when I finally stopped and turned around, there he was within me. Consider the possibility that what is traditionally referred to as God, that is infinite self-aware being, shines in each of our minds as the knowledge I, and permeates each of our bodies as the feeling of being. But is not limited to our minds or our bodies, just as space fills and permeates this room but is not limited, is not confined in or limited by this room. just as, relatively speaking, there is a, a single, unlimited and indivisible space in the universe. 
that permeates all buildings, but is not divided by them or limited to them. Consider the possibility that there is, in reality, a single, infinite and indivisible being. from which all selves borrow their am, their amness, and all things borrow their isness. Consider the possibility that when you look out across the fields here and you feel the beauty of the landscape, that what you are really feeling is your shared essence. In other words, consider the possibility that the experience of beauty is the recognition that we share our being with the object or the landscape. In other words, consider the possibility that the experience of beauty is an intervention of reality into our normal dualistic way of perceiving the world. But it is what Cezanne calls the taste of nature's eternity. A taste of what is eternally true or eternally real in nature. And consider the possibility that when we meet each other this week in love and in friendship, that what we are really experiencing in that love, in that friendship, is our shared being.
be open to the possibility that the knowing of our own being as it is is not only the direct path to peace and happiness within any individual but is also the foundation for any loving or harmonious relationship, be that relationship between individuals, communities, or nations. And must also be this knowing of our own being must also be the foundation of our relationship with the earth. Thank you.